the illegal construction build, uh, Arab construction building in East Jerusalem as a, a strategic tool of the Palestinian Authority. We tracked the, 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 money, the money path from the Palestinian Authority to the illegal Arab buildings. For example, we found a building in Mount of Olives, beautiful building on Jewish property. They are not even hiding who is behind of it. You go to the building and you see a sign in Arabic, Majlas Eliskan in Arabic. Majlas Eliskan, it's, a, a, it's a, the building committee. Okay, now the second line is, this building was built by the help of the Saudi Arabia Fund for the Jewish Palestinian, for the Palestinian uh, people. The, la the third line is, the building was built by a, this company and this company. It's on the wall. You, you don't need to be a special investigator. You know where the money is coming from and where it's going to and for what purpose. Why the Israeli government cannot close it? I will give you another example just now. April this year, I live in Mount of Olives. I drive my car, suddenly I see a big sign, many signs on the walls, Arabic. It's written there, there is an event going to be at 23rd, I think it was, of April, at the mosque next to Mount of Olives, next to my neighborhood, where I live. You see, if you look at it, yeah, you drive next to it, you, the pictures, the, 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 the colors, it's ISIS. It it's looks like ISIS. 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 So I stopped my car, took a picture, went to the office, and then I started uh, translating and looking who is the people behind. There is an organization that is out of the law in Europe. It's called Hizb el Tahrir. In Arabic, Hizb el Tahrir, the, the translation is the Liberation Party. Their goals. Go to Wikipedia, it's written there. Everything is there. You don't need to be an intelligent person. Their idea is exactly like ISIS. And they are active in Israel. And they are doing events in Mount of Olives. So why should we, we should be surprised that it was, this event was at Friday? At Saturday, 27 graves were demolished in Mount of Olives. Somebody was in the event and executed the, what he heard, the ideas, the vision, that nobody should be here. It should be an Islamic state. And to destroy anything that is related to other states or other religions. Everybody knew about this event. I told the police, I told the intelligence forces, I sent them pictures. Nobody stopped it. And it's going to, you know, we call it in Hebrew, it's going to explode in, ex, 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 explode in our face. And we see, it's, 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 it's a balloon that is, we see in front of our face how it's being, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and nobody is stopping it. So this is the, this is just one example. For some reason, somebody today in, in Encino asked me, so why don't they do it? Why? What's the problem with our leaders? So I will tell you something that I'm saying for a long time. Whoever that is not, anybody, sorry, that is, doesn't believe in what is written in the Torah, and he doesn't believe in God, I don't believe him. If you don't believe in God, I don't believe you. Very simple. And why I'm saying that? Because if you don't believe in God, and you don't believe in what is written in the Torah, this is just a matter of time when you will bend. Take another two submarines, but give us Jerusalem. Take uh, another 500 tanks or 200 air, air, aircraft or whatever, and we will secure you, 
but give part of Judea and Samaria. It's not about negotiation. It's not about security. We don't need to explain why we are living in every neighborhood in Jerusalem because of, because of security or because of, uh, I don't know what, demography. We are living here because it all belongs to us. Not because Moshe Dayan, and not because of Ben Gurion, and not because of Herzl. Because one person, not person, one thing, it's God, promised us, gave it to us. At the present, we need to keep it. And we don't have any permission to negotiate about it. It is my vision. And I think if we will talk, if our leaders will talk in this way, nobody will argue with them. Exactly like imagine that some fanatic organization will come and say, the Vatican belongs to our uh, heritage. The, Vatic the Pope will not start explain that if he will not be there, he will be in Uganda, somebody will kill, me, kill him in Uganda. No. Vatican is them. Uh, it's them. It belongs to them. Not uh, 2,000 years, but it belongs to them a few hundred years. Whatever. We need to talk in this terminology. Not security, not demography, not political, just pure, pure in a religious way, it's my opinion. So this is what we are facing in Jerusalem. People are, people, sorry, um, leaders, I think, don't take care enough of Jerusalem and the Arab side, supported by Saudi Arabia, supported by many American organizations, anti-Semitic organizations that we see them everywhere, everywhere. You cannot imagine, I saw today, a group of U UCLA, you cannot imagine. They, were, they went to Israel, to a tour in Israel. Yeah, never mind. They took them to all the, to meet all the Arabs, the poor Arabs, of course, to meet peace now, of course. This is Israel for them. So we need to educate, we need to explain, and we need to build, and we need to live, and we need to pray for Jerusalem. If you have other questions. I know you. <laughs> you, you are chasing me. Yeah. Yeah, the Solomon Stables. Yeah. Look, this is another example of, of Bibi. At 1998, and 19... Is anybody rescuing any of the debris? Yeah, 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 yeah. They, 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 um, at 1998, Benjamin Netanyahu allowed the, the, the waqf to dig under the southwest, southeast corner of the Temple Mount. It's called the Salomon Stables. And they built, they dig, they did whatever they want there. Um, they destroyed a lot of antiquity and uh, no 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 this is, some, this is something else from outside from the direction of the city of david no no what he, but what happened where they digged when the arab dig the muslim digs it's inside the walls of the temple mount right. and they dig there and they uh, did a lot of uh, damage for uh, um, antiquity from, uh, from the second temple. Um, at at 2000, 2001, 2001 I think it was, um, organization, organization of City of David got the permission to take this, uh, all the earth, all the ground that was taken out from this place and was dumped in the Kidron Valley to take it to another place nearby next to Mount Scopus, next to Yeshiva Betorot. And there they are doing uh, kind of a, uh, uh, the 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 yeah, the shifting po project. Um, but inside the Temple Mount, no, no archaeologic, archaeological, and no organization is allowed to do any kind of excavation. Yes. Two questions. One is those ten neighborhoods. When were those signs put up that they were forbidden for Jews? Uh, five years ago, five years ago. 
You, you, you know what? You know what's important. What is interesting? One of the neighborhoods, sorry, one area where there are three neighborhoods. One, the, one of the neighborhoods named is the Peace neighborhood. Okay, ironical, the Peace neighborhood, and Shuafat refugee camp, and another co neighborhood called Anata. These three neighborhoods. Um, the army, the Israeli government put the signs. The Arabs living there took it down. And this is, this is something that, that is, I didn't mention before, but I must say. It's very interesting that today, in the Israeli government, in the internal administration, there are, there are 80,000 applications that were submitted by Arabs from East Jerusalem that they are, uh, that they are um, older than 18 years, okay? Uh, they crossed the 18, uh, age of 18, and they requested to get full Israeli citizenship. So if it's so bad to live under Israeli occupation, so why are they asking to get Israeli citizenship? This is one thing. Second thing, once Israel puts this separation I don't call it separation, it's real political line. Mm -hmm. But they call it separation. It's not separating anybody because the Arabs are living from both sides and Jews are living both sides. So what is, what is separating? It's not security because any Arab that wants to cross this wall can cross it in the middle of the day. Nobody can stop him. It's 17 kilometers, 17 kilometers. If you want to stop people that want to, that are crossing the wall, you need to put a policeman or a soldier every, let's say, 50 meters, 100 meters. So imagine. But there is no. The, all of these 17 kilometers, there is maybe, maybe 120 soldiers and, and officers and uh, policemen. They are not stopping anybody from crossing this wall. They cross it at the middle of the day. And at night, of course. So Arabs that lived, lived at the Israeli Jerusalem neighborhoods, but behind of the wall, in the so-called Arabic side, in the eastern side, like any human being that doesn't want to live in a ghetto, and it is a ghetto, what happened? They moved in to the western neighborhoods. Where to? To Jewish neighborhoods. Ivat Sofatit, Pisgat Ze'ev, Amon Anatsiv, Gilo. In central of Jerusalem, you know Rehov, uh, King, King David Street and Keren Ha'ethot Street? At the corner, there's a beautiful corner building with a round front for it. Belong to an Arab. All the building. His office is right there. If you continue from Keren Ha'ethot, King David Street, you go to the direction of, uh, of King's. King's, Prim, uh, King's uh, Hotel, or Central of Town. There's another building there. Chabatzelet Street, that is going, uh, it's ending at Zion Square, at Chabatzelet Street. There are more than 20 house, apartments and offices belong to Arabs. Rehov Arab Cook, that is, uh, it's between the Nevi'im and Rehov Yafo. Go see how many Arabs. W what happened suddenly? happened that our leaders kept them there, thinking that they keep them there at the behind of the wall, and they would stay there. But no. About 60, 60, 60 thousand Arabs that were living outside of Jerusalem, in Bethlehem, in Abu Dis, in Azariah, in, in Hebron, in Jericho, and Arabs that living in the Arabs' neighborhoods, that are behind of the wall, 60,000 of them moved in. Moved in? Why should they stay there? Nobody wants to stay in a place that in order to get to school or back from school can take him about two hours because he need to pass a checkpoint. Or a woman need to go to hospital with a, she has a, a, you know, a, a baby, two hours. Why? They did the calculation. Why should we? 
So they moved in. Nobody can tell them no. They have Israeli ID. So I hope that this war will be taken down. And I hope, uh, like I, you know, Gaza, I said it today already in some place today, at Gaza Strip, I was born in a kibbutz next to Gaza, one and a half kilometers from Gaza, kibbutz Alumim. It's a religious kibbutz. As a child, I was hitchhiking in Sajaiya. I was hitchhiking to go to Gush Katif. I was walking for my kibbutz or cycling with my bicycle to the Sea of Gaza, through the market of Gaza. It was just 25 years ago. And we need to decide if we want in another 25 years that central of Jerusalem will be like Shderot and Ashkelon or Kibbutz Elumim where my parents still live or we want Jerusalem to stay not talking about not talking about East Jerusalem talking about central Jerusalem stay a security and Jewish place and if we don't stop it I'm God forbid, I'm telling you, we are going to get to a place, a situation, like exactly we have, we call it in Hebrew, Otef Aza. Otef Aza is the area that is surrounding Gaza. It's like the phrase that they use to describe the area that is under attacks from Gaza Strip. We will have also the surrounding of Jerusalem. The distance, the distance between a house in Neve Yaakov, it's a Jewish neighborhood, to the house in Aram, it's 20 meters. 20 meters. You don't need a missile. You just take your pistol, you stand on the roof, roof and you shoot your neighbor. You just told us 360. What? You just told us 360 attacks in a month. Yeah, but it will not be a stone. It will not be a Morocco bottle. What? It will be anything they choose. Yes? Okay, you live in the Sudan and you said you were attacked 50 times. What protection do you have living where you are? If other Jews living there, what protection do they have? Uh, my policy, it's a, good, it's a good question because this is where we have kind of a conflict between us, people like me, our activity in East Jerusalem. My policy is the Jews need to walk, need to drive, need to visit, need to tour in East Jerusalem, feeling comfortable and secure like they do the same in Ben Yehuda Street, in Chovilel, in the Shuk Machane Yehuda, in central of Jerusalem. So why, what I mean is, I don't, it's embarrassing, it's a shame for us that people need to walk with security guards in Jerusalem. You, people, schools, schools and kindergartens going to, to, a, uh, to tours in, not in East Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, to the Kotel, they need to have a security guard with a gun. This is a big problem. It's a problem that, that, the, the, the way we almost, and I would say, educate the young generation is that Jerusalem is a dangerous area. And uh, it's from kindergarten, school, and it's in all of the other aspects. I had a problem with a, in my house with the ad, the oven, oven in the, in the kitchen. My wife called for a technician, and we have a guarantee. How we call it? A insurance. We called them. One of the biggest companies in Israel, Electra. He said, "No, I'm not going there. It's dangerous." I told you when I paid you three, three or five months years in advance. He didn't say no here, no there. Come, he didn't come. Two and a half months. The only reason why, why he came after two and a half months is because we took it to the to the news. It was in the news. 
And when I, then I sued him in court. And two, uh, last week, we won. The judge told him, it's a contract. Even if there was a war, he said, he said, even during the war in Gaza last year, companies could not say, because of the war, I cannot get there. If you want to say that, say it when you sell it and write it in the contract. OK? And I think this is what we need to send the message. That first is Jerusalem needs to be a place where people can walk and travel safety all the time. And by putting in some areas where, people, where Jews are living, there are places, most of the places, I must say, like in the city of David, in the old cities, there are security guards. Secu private companies. I'm against it. Where, wherever we are involved as Israel Land Fund, Bet Hanina, Bet Safafa, uh, Mount of Olives, I'm talking about areas in Jerusalem, Shimon Atzad, Nachalat Shimon, this is next to Shimon Atzadik, no security guards. The police call me, Aryeh, put security guards, it's dangerous. I said, ah, it's dangerous? What is so dangerous? He said, he said, throwing stones, what about it? I said, okay, so you the police, take care of it. Exactly like you will take care of it if it's happening in Tel Aviv or in Ramat Gan. East Jerusalem is like West Jerusalem. It's like the entire areas, other areas in Israel. I don't see people in Kirat Shmona or in Netanya putting security guards. Maybe if there are, you know, wealthy people that are afraid that somebody will break in and steal something. But if there is a problem, the police should solve it. Also, police is a... Sim it varies. It's a so sovereignty. It's a way to dis to to inf not to enforce, but to assert. to assert to assert the, the sovereignty in the areas where we need any kind of symbolic sovereignty. Even so, my attitude is not to spend by the but but for example, what we are doing in Mount of Olives, Mount of Olives. Be we are, we organized ourselves. When now, when my house is attacked, we are responding. We chase them into their neighborhoods. And you know, you know what's happening once we do that? When they throw on us, the police just looking at it. But when we chase them, the police is there uh, chasing us. <laughs> so we will go out. This is the situation. I'm, not, I'm talking about this is 90% of the incident. This is, this is the situation. So my attitude, by the way, it's the law. When somebody is attacking you, you are allowed to respond and to chase him and to catch him. Even not against you, against any person, other person that is under a threat. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. It is. Of course. Uh, are you allowed to shoot? Them? You are allowed to shoot just if you are under a threat of your if your life are in a threat. Okay. So this is all the point. So if you are shooting you, so it's already already shot you and you are God forbid uh, injured or even worse than that. So then you cannot respond. This is the it's a big. Uh, it's a, big, uh, it's a big issue. Today, and not today, I'm saying for many of them, telling people, don't walk with your pistol, with your weapon, if you are by yourself in East Jerusalem. Because this weapon will be used against you. If you are by yourself, don't, better not to go with that. Why? Because in order to use it against you, they don't need even to touch you. What are they doing, the Arabs? Again, not again, I, say it, I will say it now. They know the law better than us. Let's imagine you are walking with your pistol in the middle of some area in East Jerusalem. Two Arabs see that you have it. You know what they are doing? They just dial 100. 
the police is coming, and what are they saying? No, you are allowed. Oh, you shot. No, you didn't shot. You just took it and did, you, you, you threatened them. Enough. Your pistol will be taken from you. First, criminal. Maybe you will sit some, uh, for some time. Without even knowing who are you, without even see what the color of your pistol is. And they are doing it. Many people got criminal um, uh, records because of this kind of activity of Arab against individuals that were wearing, uh, walking with a pistol by themselves. So we need to be aware. I, I'm not walking with a pistol when I'm by myself, besides when I'm going to uh, dangerous areas. Then I take it. Yes. Questions? More questions? Yes. What kind of uh, media coverage do you get from the Israeli uh, radio and TV? Um, How do they report the issues that you're involved in? Um, look, they are looking all the time, the media in Israel all the time looking for um, stories, I will say like that. Um, many of them. Uh, but unfortunately, not all, but a lot of them are uh, manipulating the, the stories and the way of uh, reporting, okay? Uh, so we are uh, delicate with that. Uh, in general, uh, but the, in general there is, there, there are more and more reports. And again, we were learning how to, we are learning how to use the, 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 the media to our uh, favor, or to the favor of Jerusalem. Uh, there are some that are against any kind of connection with the media. I think it's a mistake. All kind of uh, people, organizations, that are also active in East Jerusalem, but in general they are saying, no response, don't want to talk, don't want to see, don't want to hear. I think it's a mistake because the other side, our... Uh, uh, enemies, Arab enemies, or just anti-Semitic organization, or leftists in Israel, are using the media as a, uh, one of the, I would say, uh, um, one of the important uh, tools against us and against uh, uh, our ideas. Yeah. Do you have a list of, of people to write to, or let's say you come to me? Whoever wants to do that. I think on every paper, at first I have a, no, no, you can keep it. I have a, I have a, a card. You can email me and I can write to you back to whoever you want to write. You write, tell me Bibi, you get Bibi. Barkat the mayor, you get Barkat. You want Danny Dano, take it. Gilad Ardan, president, we have all the names, so all the uh, email addresses, telephones, etc. And I'm telling you, it's 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 uh, it's affecting. By by they knowing that people know about that, it's disturbing them. Not the point that you are what you are pointing on, but the point that people know about it, it's disturbing them. Okay, so. Uh, in the government right now? In the government? Yeah. Because they have many friends. But, but they have also political uh, goals, I would say. Okay. I trust a lot, uh, for example, Gilad Ardan. He is now the Minister of Police. Um, uh, Boogie alone in some aspects. Some aspects. Uh, and again, politics is politics. Yes. Uh, Danny Danone, in some aspects. Uh, look, today for me, I, I can tell I am also a kind of a small politician in Jerusalem. So before I was there, people told me, this is politics. This is politics. You say one, you do another thing. You say X, you say you do Y. 
I don't know, for, again, Jerusalem is not Israel, municipality is not Knesset, I know. But I, in Jerusalem, there's, again, these lines or borders that you don't cross. Even if it's against the mayor, if it's against the coalition, or against the, 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 the prime minister. This is my, like, there are, I have few borders I will not cross, but this is one of them. Uh, and what I expect from anyone, and I tell you that in Jerusalem, uh, so in the government today, maybe, not maybe, Uri Ariel, from the Bait the Jewish house, in some aspects, but again, there are minority in the government. My pleasure, yeah. Um, are there any specific individuals, who are Arab or not Jews, who are buying up the land uh, that's Jewish owned? And if so, who are they? Who are the Arabs that are buying? Yeah, the, the ones who are buying up the land. The Arabs are, um, most of them are being sponsored by funds from Arab countries. Saudi Arabia, the Arab Bank, uh, we know the Hamas have a fund to buy properties in Jerusalem. So it's uh, most of the money, most, not all, but most coming from uh, Arab ideology uh, uh, organization from outside the country. And there are also few rich Arabs that are buying also from, from, and from ideology reasons. There was, uh, at 2011, an entire neighborhood called Nof Tzion. Nof Tzion, Zion View, next to Jabal Mukaber. Three, uh, 400 units that the company that owned this neighborhood called Digal, D-I-G-A-L, it was a, a public company uh, in the, that is, was uh, trained in the, in, the, in the stock market in Israel. And they went into almost to bankruptcy, and a, a Arab, sorry, a lawyer gave an offer to buy <coughs> the property. This neighborhood in Jab next to, in Jabal Mukaber, next to Amon Natsib. The lawyer name was Dov Weissglass. You know the name? No. Dov Weissglass was one of the team of Arik Sharon. His closest team of Arik Sharon. This was the name of the na of the lawyer, Dov Weissglass. Some th something was smelled not good. The company that he re represented that wanted to buy this public company was a company registered in Cyprus. So we sent somebody to Cyprus, to the offices of this company. And we entered the, somebody that we sent into the office and he see a, a, a secretary. He asked her, where is this company? And she said, I don't know this company. And they, who is this office belong to? And she said, it belong to a very rich Arab, a billion, maybe he's a billionaire, or no doubt he's a multimillionaire from the States, a guy, an Arab that was uh, arrested because he was involved in terrorist attacks. Okay, talking about few, uh, like 20 years ago. In some way, I think he got married with American Arab. He moved to the States, made a lot of money, and returned to Ramallah. And now, with his money that he made here, and now he's doing, still doing in Ramallah, he, he tried to, to buy this uh, neighborhood. Thank God we were able to stop it. We were able to stop it, but it's just explaining what's happening. We are facing a lot of money coming from Arab, Arab funds, Arab states, uh, and Arab individuals, very rich individuals.